What's up guys and welcome to another week. Welcome to anybody who's new to the channel. Lots of people joined the channel over the course of last week with the uh, F1 car launches. So welcome, thank you for coming along. I hope you enjoy it. We do this all the time and Mondays typically uh, is a day where I try and answer as many of your questions are, as I can. Uh, if you've got a question for me, fire it in at any time and on any platform using the hashtag, hashtag Ask Elvis. I then collate them all, I look through them, I pick some of the best ones and on a Monday, I will always try and do my best to pop a video together answering as many as I can. So that's exactly what we're going to do today for the first time then of the 2019 season. Roll the sting. Right, let's start with this one then from Victor Philo. Victor Philo. Uh, he says, hi Mark, why are teams usually running the full wet tyres during the shakedown events after launching a new car. Um, well, shakedown events are, they're a thing in the rules, they're actually a kind of a promotional day um, which the teams are allowed a set number of, very limited, very limited number of miles, I think it's 100 kilometers, um, and they have to be run on uh, dedicated shakedown tires or promotional tires. Um, they will often do an installation lap or the first few installation laps of a brand new car of which you know when I talk about an installation lap I mean the car leaving the garage normally one single exploratory lap and then back into the the garage for the team to then pull it apart and have a look because although it's a promotional or filming day of obviously having just launched a brand new car it's also the first opportunity a team have to see the car on circuit and to see you know, once they pull the bodywork off, take the wheels off, is anything rubbing on things like brake ducts? Is anything getting too hot around the exhaust area? Um, there are so many things that you don't ever get to really see until the car's actually turned a wheel. And on those incidences, there is no point in putting them out on tyres that you might actually want to do some kind of performance runs on later on. So for the very first part of the day, wet tyres are normally the best way to do it because you're going very slowly, you're not in any way trying to look for performance. So it's just anything really to get a car around a circuit and back to you. That's why you see lots of pictures of cars on wet tires for those early part, the installation runs in the early part of a shakedown. Douglas Berglund asks this one. He says, uh, is it just me or is McLaren's new MCL 34 extremely low? I also noticed that the diffuser is blacked out and Craig Slater said during a Mercedes launch that they aren't allowed to film the back of the car. What's up with that? Well, first, link, first thing then, the MCL 34, I think actually the launch pictures that we were all given uh, of that online were a little bit misleading. And I said that in my review video. Um, I think it was looking very, very low, very flat. I actually think you know, they will retain the high rake concept that they had last year where the rear of the car is gonna be jacked up. Uh, we'll see that today with it on track. So don't read too much into the fact that the launch pictures looked very low with the McLaren. In terms of the diffuser though, the diffuser and the underfloor section of any Formula One car is one of the last areas that a team you know, has the ability to keep secret because of course with the bodywork, with the wings, it's all out there, it's all out in the open, anybody can see it, there are a million pictures being taken of it. But the diffuser and the underfloor, an area that's absolutely crucial to generating downforce and efficiency, uh, is one of the last areas that they still have some control over, over where, which other people see it. They can protect it, they can hide it, and so to retain that little last element of secrecy, that's exactly what they do. They don't want anybody seeing it. It's a really key area. So much downforce of a Formula One car is produced by the underfloor and the diffuser section. Um, and you know, everybody assumes it's just the wings and the bodywork up top, but actually the underside is one of the most powerful downforce generating elements of any car. So if they can keep it secret, they absolutely will. Howell Jones says, Hi Mark, is it me or do the halos look to be a tad higher up this year, especially on the Ferrari and the Red Bull? No, they're not. They're in exactly the same space uh, and same dimensions. Some of them have repainted them in different colours and, and I'm even surprised how much that changes the appearance of the halo and the way it's integrated. What can happen is the way that it's integrated with the bodywork and the sides of the chassis below can change in terms of dimension and that can have the effect of making it look much higher or much lower on certain cars. But no, within the regulations, nothing uh, dramatic has changed in that area. 
Uh, Franz Tudal says, just a quick question. It may be silly, but I just realized the nose cone is part of the crash structure. How does that work when it's detachable? Thanks for the vids. Well, thanks for the question, Franz. Um, the point of the nose cone is that it is part of the crash structure, which means that the nose cone itself has to go through its own uh, individual crash testing procedure. Now, obviously the chassis, the monocoque, the part the driver sits in, also has to go through uh, structural crash testing, um, but the nose cone is a deformable structure. Obviously it's the first point of impact in a head-on collision, so the nose cone has to have uh, a dedicated crash structure, uh, crash test as well. Uh, that's all done within the factories and then it goes to be assessed, officially assessed, and has to pass those before it can ever be used in testing or a race. Um, now because that's deformable and it has to deform in a certain way, it also has to do that when it's connected to the chassis. It has to be bolted up face to face and therefore becomes almost part of the same crash structure. It works in exactly the same way as the deformable carbon fibre monocoque. So one crushes, that, that nose cone is the area that has to crush, absorb all the energy before any impact with a, another car or a barrier gets to the monocoque, which is of course housing the driver. So it's, a, it's meant to deform, but it's meant to deform in a certain way. And when it's bolted face to face, hard up as it is against the front of the, the monocoque, even though it's detachable, once it's bolted up, it's bolted up hard, it becomes part of that same structure. So it does work. Um, the, the, the fixings, the mounting points, equally have to be proven to work. It can't, you know, the, the crash structure test is not just a head-on test. It also has to resist forces from different angles as well to make sure it doesn't just break off and the teams have to factor that into their, to their design so there's a lot goes into making sure that those nose cones are not just aerodynamically brilliant and, and efficient but do tick all of the safety boxes. Teams now take driver safety incredibly seriously as does the FIA so there's a lot, a lot of science behind how they work, how they deform and how they're attached to the chassis itself. Uh, Chip Hines says, how much can the team change the car during the race year? Uh, well, the answer to that is, in theory, as much as they want. Um, the updates and the changes you can bring to your car are only really limited by budget, by resource and by the time that you've got available. The caveats to that are, if you wanted to bring in a new car every race with a new chassis and everything else, of course, it would have to go through all the rigmarole of, of crash testing uh, and passing the FIA safety tests before you could ever run it on a circuit. Uh, and so the reality is that you just simply wouldn't have time to do that. But when it comes to bits around the car, wings, bodywork, floors, um, lots of the, the mechanical components, there is no restriction on how many updates you can bring as a team throughout the year. Um, you know, the, the biggest restriction is budget uh, because most teams are not unlimited in their budgets. Even the biggest teams like Mercedes and Ferrari, although they have what seems like an endless pot of money, they have to still answer to a board of directors, a board of shareholders who are essentially paying for all of that. So it's not endless. They have to be efficient in how they spend it. And the point is, if you're constantly updating and bringing new parts, it then becomes a little bit more difficult to follow the development path because you're sort of bouncing off in different directions, always trying to learn new parts, new components, rather than really getting to grips with what you have, understanding how it works, understanding how to get the best out of it through different settings and through different ride heights and, and different configurations. So if something's not working, there's nothing stopping you, stopping you replacing you know, all of those parts on an almost weekly basis if you wanted to, but the sensible way to do it is to find a baseline, tweak it as you go, uh, and constantly start to enhance uh, you know, that baseline package you've got, rather than looking for massive sweeping changes, because that proves that your development path potentially wasn't the best one in the first place. And so much work goes into that pre-season that we would all hope by now that teams have gone down a path that they think is not only great, but will, be, will allow them a continuous uh, scalable development throughout the season to keep bringing performance to the car on a regular basis. Okay, Ray C. Boy, Ray C. Boy um, says, how about three bold predictions from you for the 2019 F1 season 
uh, and he's listed his as well. He's gone for Leclerc wins the Australian Grand Prix, Hulkenberg gets his first F1 podium, and Max Verstappen wins the 2019 Championship. Bold predictions indeed, Ray C. Boy. Um, all right, okay, well, here's mine then. I'm going to go with Charles Leclerc winning the 2019 Championship. You ask for bold predictions, there's a bold one. Charles Leclerc, in his first season with Ferrari, takes the championship win. I'm going to go, I, do you know what, my other one, I was because I've been thinking this for a while, I'm going to agree with you with Hulkenberg getting his first F1 podium. I think Renault potentially have a car that on occasions might be able to challenge, so I'll go with that. Hulkenberg standing on the podium for the first time, and I'm actually going to go with the Honda... Uh, Red Bull relationship breaking down. Now there's a bold prediction. There's no basis for any of this, by the way. These are wild and crazy bold predictions. That's what you asked for. Uh, Honda and Red Bull running into massive problems and that relationship breaking down. I can't see that if Honda don't deliver, I can't see Christian Horner and Red Bull being very, very vocal, as they've been in the past at Renault, about how disappointed they are with their new partnership. What will come from that, who knows, because where else can they possibly go if they decide to eventually part ways with Honda? Who knows? So many questions, but there you go. You asked for it. Three very bold predictions about the 2019 F1 season. Right, let's finish up with this one from Benjamin, who says, It looks like Ferrari have followed Red Bull's use of matte paint. Is there any performance gain or is it just a style choice? Right, well, this is the debate that's gone on for years, hasn't it? Since lots of teams, starting with Red Bull uh, a while ago, used a matte finish on their paint. Um, th the reality is that they've chosen that paint finish for stylistic reasons. Um, there is lots of research and lots of debate that goes on about whether it's got any performance enhancements. In terms of aerodynamics, I just don't think it has. I think even Christian Horner said they have analysed it to death and the aerodynamic benefits, if there are any, are so minuscule that no one can really decide if they're actually there or not. So it's definitely not for that reason. There is a potential argument to say that the matte finish is lighter and we are talking nothing. But you know what Formula, One's a t uh, Formula One teams are like, if there is any kind of uh, weight saving to be had, they will take it. So there's a potential, and I'm not even saying it's there because without weighing the two uh, amounts of paint, you just don't know. But there's a potential that you may save some weight, but that's it. So no, it's not, these matte finishes on the Formula One cars are not for aerodynamic benefit. Uh, I think we can pretty much say that conclusively. Uh, okay, thank you very much everybody for all of your questions. Obviously F1 testing underway right now. I will be following it quite closely uh, and I will try and bring updates. If I can't do a, a separate video on a, an update on testing, which I'll try to, but I'm also in charge of the kids this week because it's half term, <laughs> which is making it even more tricky. <laughs> and there you go, just to prove it. Um, <laughs> Um, but uh, what I will try and do is keep across social media. So if you're not following me on, on Twitter or on Instagram, do so. It's at F1 Elvis, and I will try and update people as the day goes on with any observations. Um, I'll, of course, be following it on Sky. If you're not watching it yet, you can watch uh, the coverage of the afternoon sessions of this week's test on Sky Sports F1. Um, but thank you very much everybody for all the questions. As I say, welcome to those who are new to the channel. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, hit that like button. If anyone is watching this but not yet subscribed to the channel, hit subscribe and you won't miss another one. There's loads of F1 content coming your way over the course of the next season and months and weeks and days. Don't miss another one. Hit subscribe. Share it around and tell your mates. That would be really great. I'd appreciate it. But for now, thank you very much as always. <laughs>